Okay, so if your AdSense application was rejected because of low quality content, there can be so many reasons. Not always low quality content means that your article or your website was really bad. No. Sometimes just there's some things you miss and you can fix those low quality issues by applying to following things. I will try to give you some actionable points so you can apply these points on your website or a blog so that your website will not be low quality website and your AdSense application will be approved. So in no particular order, let's start with the first point. Why your website could have low quality content error. The first thing could be thin content. So what happens when a new beginner, you write very small blog posts. So make sure whenever you try to write blog posts, write a blog post which is at least 1000 to 1200 words minimum when it's first time you're trying to apply for Google AdSense. Especially when you're a beginner and not have too much of experience in the field of blogging. And now you must be thinking how you can write 800 to 1000 blog posts. So what I suggest you and what most of the people does in the industry because it is almost impossible that you can have so much knowledge about one topic. You need to learn those things. Make sure to try to read books, some articles, some different blog posts on the internet which are ranking already for those keywords. Try to read all those things. And then once you get all those in your mind, then you try to write blog posts. So give it some time. Just don't think that you can write like few words about any topic and your blog post is really valuable. So try to write minimum 1000 words to remove the thin content error and have better quality of your articles. The second issue why you receive low quality content error because of duplicate content. What happened? I see a lot of bloggers does it especially when they're beginner. They try to copy the content from somewhere and they go to different blog posts. They copy little content from here and there always they try to copy content from different blogs or different books or from anywhere. So if you're copying content from anywhere, it is duplicate content. And when Google sees this, Google servers are really powerful and their duplicate content detection tool is very powerful. So make sure not copying content from anywhere else. Even one more thing you need to understand that if you're writing the same content in different articles on your website, that also duplicate content. And there's one very important thing you need to understand here. For example, what happens? You have two different blog posts on your website. For example, one blog post says, how to reduce weight and other blog post says how to sleep well and you write only two paragraphs in, on both the pages they might be cause duplicate content because you know why because your header which has a lot of text and your footer which has a lot of text sidebar has a lot of text so main content on the page is very similar to two different pages even those pages are different urls and even those pages are different content but because the content is so thin content that you might have this problem of duplicate content so make sure you do not copy content from anywhere and main content on the page should be your blog post. Like I explained the point one. So if you write detailed blog post and not copy it from anywhere else, you will not have duplicate content issue and your website will pass for the low quality content error. Okay, the third point is AI generated or AI content. Sometimes it's possible you have seen a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of blog posts that you can write the content from AI and add on your website and your site could be approved for Google AdSense. That's true in some cases, but for a long time you don't know if it's gonna be true. So honestly, trust me, I highly recommend you do not copy the content from AI. Do not take auto generated content and add on your website. You need to understand how to use AI properly. For example, if I want to write a blog post about how to sleep properly, I'm gonna go to ChatGPT or Gemini. I'm gonna write, okay, I want to write a blog post about how to sleep well. Give me bullet points to support my article and also give me references. So what I will do, ChatGPT will give me or Gemini will give me a lot of bullet points to write about. And then also I will try to read the references ChatGPT gave me from. So what I will do, I will open those references ChatGPT or Gemini gave me. I will read those papers and then based on this thing, I will write my content. And also what I will do, I will add those references which ChatGPT gave me, which I read by myself to my blog post that this article, this information is taken from this document. And this should be like proper genuine document, not from any low quality blog post. And this should be from a reputable website or reputable source, which are trustworthy. So this is how you use AI to write your blog post. Don't just ask, write your blog post, copy it, paste it. No, ask for the bullet point, ask for the guidance, and then you write content yourself. The next point will be poor grammar and spelling errors. It is very easy nowadays. You write your blog post, and then you can use tools like Grammarly, or you can just by default enable the grammar spelling checking on your computer to make sure that not so much spelling mistake. Of course, you don't need to be perfect in English or any language if you're writing the blog post. If you have a few errors, that's totally fine. But do not have so big errors in every line, every sentence, because that tells Google that this person is not capable of writing the article in this language. It doesn't matter you're writing in English, Hindi, Urdu, Arabic, any language. Make sure you test your blog post with spelling check and grammar check tool like Grammarly. I will add the link to Grammarly in the description of this video, so you can download it. It is a free tool. 
I use this tool myself for writing all my emails, sometimes my text messages. Even you can use AI also, you can use ChatGPT. Once you write your article, you can write the whole article in ChatGPT and tell ChatGPT, okay, please correct the spelling mistakes. Make sure guys, ChatGPT doesn't change the language of your blog post because if it changes the language, then it's gonna be AI generated content. So ask ChatGPT only correct your spelling and grammatical mistakes. So you don't need to have so much knowledge about that language. What I want to say here is it is really easy to write article without spelling mistake and grammar mistake. Just write it and then ask AI tool or any other tool like Grammarly to correct the spelling mistakes. And just take like few seconds to up to a couple of minutes to correct those mistakes. So make sure article do not have poor grammar or spelling mistakes. Next point will be low relevance or value. For example, I want to write a blog post about how to sleep well. And then I can write different points. I can write an introduction that in this blog post, I want to tell you how you can have better sleep and you have better recovery. And then I can add three or four points. For example, I can say, okay, do not eat before you go to sleep. And then second point could be make your room dark. Third point could be sleep early. And I can write four paragraph, but this is very generic information. I'm not writing any new value. And this is not a very detailed article. Or what I can do instead, I can read some papers and then I can say what happens in our mind, how the sleep cycle works. You know, we have 45 minutes of sleep cycles. I can include those kind of information in my article, which are more detailed, which are more value instead of generic information. I can also write, okay, you can drink a chamomile tea or you can have some drinks which relaxes your mind so you can sleep well when you go to sleep and you have better recovery. I can include more scientific evidence how you can sleep better. I can introduce users to some applications where you can track your sleep. When users sleep, so next the user can check at which point they wake up early, at what point, what are the sleep patterns. So you can write this kind of information and make your article high quality and more valuable because writing genuine information is also writing low quality content. So make sure you're giving some exclusive information in your articles. And it is not really hard guys, trust me, no matter what kind of content you want to write, if you try to gather some information on this article, try to read high quality websites or scientific websites and then you write a content, it will be very high quality. Next point, we need no evidence of research and insight. For example, if I write 30 million people every week faces problem with sleeping and I just write this point, I make a big claim, but I don't add any article research supporting this argument. So make sure when you write any point like this, when you talk about broadly about a research or insight, make sure you add the relevant links. For example, if on WHO's website, there's a pattern about a pattern about our health or about vaccines, about anything. If I'm adding some information, I should add those links also. And it is really easy. Even when you try to access this website, you understand. Just copy those URLs, then you can add in the end of article. Or you can link that point from the research was taken to the official website of WHO or any website where you took that link. Or any research which might have conducted by a company or organization, add the link to that website page. Next point, I see what happens when people use images which are copyright images. So guys, make sure you do not use any copyright images. There are a lot of websites which provide high quality images, copyright free, like pixels.com, pixabay.com. I will add the link in the description. So make sure you are using images only from these kind of websites. Do not use Google search engine, just go on Google and copy image from there and add on your website. No, that's a very bad point. So because these images which could appear in search results, they might be copyrighted. So make sure when you add those images on an article or blog post, these images are from copyright sources. Again, check the links in description. So next point would be keyword stuffing. What is keyword stuffing? For example, how to sleep well. This is the title of my blog post. And then I use this word, how to sleep well or sleep well too much into my article. Every line I use sleep well, sleep well, sleep well. I see this very beginner mistake. A lot of beginners does this mistake. Do not do this thing. You need to create your article. You need to write your article around that thing. You should include these keywords in your title and in your meta description. Of course, unlike maybe first introduction line, and sometimes naturally you should use it in your article. But do not just focus on this keyword too much in your article. You should always focus on adding the related keyword, for example, how to sleep well. So make sure not stuffing your keywords too much into your blog post. And guys, last point will be unclear website and poor web design. It is really important guys, when somebody comes on your website, you should have clear navigation menu on your website. So people can navigate easily on your website. Make sure text is readable, the heading should be bigger. The main text should be smaller. Don't have content every on your website. Try to give your user a easy experience, nice experience when they come to your website or blog post. Make sure you add all the menus which are visible on the header and on footer, there should be relevant links. Do not stuff so much content on your website. When articles end, make sure you have next blog post, previous blog post or related blog post there so people can navigate to other blog posts within that category. So overall website design should be clean. That's really important guys. Sometimes I see people, they create very bad website. They write nice articles and it's not their mistake. They're not professional web designers. 
There's so many articles. I've created myself some articles how to create a nice web design. So make sure the design is real nice. Okay, so once you have followed all these points from my video, make sure you apply those changes your website. Watch some other very detailed videos I create about Google AdSense approval. I give so many information about those things. And I'm sure if you follow all these videos, then your website will be high quality and the AdSense application will be approved. So make sure you make all these changes. Watch the videos in the description. Then you apply for Google AdSense, your website will be approved. If your website is still not approved, please comment down below. I reply to all the comments on this channel. I'm really happy to help you out. But I request you first watch these videos, put some effort by yourself and then it will be really fun if you are not able to do something and I will help you. Because sometimes what happens, people don't even watch the video, they just comment, okay, they need help about something. So I highly suggest you watch these videos, gain some knowledge, apply on this thing. And if still not working, then I'm here to help you out. I reply to all the comments on this channel. So implement these things and apply to Google AdSense and let me know if your AdSense application is approved. If you get any value from this video, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends, family and your co-workers or your colleagues or anybody you want. And watch this amazing detailed playlist here which will really improve your chances of Google AdSense approved and improve your blogging.